sources of finance then where we can get money from both internally and externally so here we have a, a balance sheet a statement of financial position um, given in the old UK format where you've got the non-current assets the PP there at the top then the current assets and current liabilities the receivables inventory and payables then the long-term liabilities and finally what we call the equity the share capital and the retained earnings so if that's our balance sheet where can we get money from in order to invest we need to finance an investment well a couple of places firstly look at those three there the current assets less current liabilities if you remember it's what we call the working capital and if we can improve how quickly the receivables pay us how quickly we move the stock on and if we can lengthen the amount of time it takes to payables this will this will free up some cash uh, so an improved working capital cycle will free up cash to give us the finance in order to uh, invest in positive MPV projects. Another way is to pay less dividends out of those retained earnings there. Okay, so if we pay less dividends, that means we'll have more cash in order to invest. One final point I wanted to note there is you'll see I've mentioned an 8% long term loan. Um, return on capital employed is a figure that you've probably heard before which is the operating profit divided by your total assets less current liabilities or long-term loans plus equity now should we pay off that loan well as it's an eight percent loan if we were to pay it off that means we'd effectively be getting an eight percent return so for it to be a good idea our return on capital employed must be lower than eight percent because otherwise, we may as well use the money to invest in a new project, project where we can make a return on capital employed of at least 8%. If we can't make 8%, then it might be an idea to pay off that long-term loan, because that would effectively give us an 8% return. Okay, so improve the working capital cycle, less dividends. That would help us finance positive MPBs. Just want to have a look at then this dividends. We're saying pay less dividends. Well, dividend policy in a perfect market. Modigliani and Miller mentioned in a perfect market where there are no transition, transaction costs, everybody knows what's going on. Well, they said, well, dividend policy makes no difference. So don't worry about it. If you need to cut dividends to get more money, then you should cut dividends and get more money because the only thing that matters is investing in positive NPVs. So you need the money to invest in positive NPVs, so reduce your dividends accordingly. Now, this is in a perfect market. Um, many people suggest that perhaps it's not a good idea because if you were to cut your dividends, shareholders don't like it. Well, Modigliani and Miller have an answer for that as well. It's what they call homemade dividends. Because if you invest in positive NPVs, what happens is your share price goes up. And if you've had an increase in the share price, well, what you could do then is sell that share and effectively make a profit. And therefore, that is effectively your dividend. So by selling your own shares, you can make homemade dividends if you so wish. OK, that's dividend policy in a perfect market. Another uh, idea that you want to mention when talking about dividend policy is what we see there, a bird in the hand. The idea that, uh, yes, share prices may go up, but a dividend today is a dividend today. It's good to have dividends now rather than potential share prices in the future. So many people actually prefer to have uh, a dividend now. So in the real world then, a reduction in dividends or an increase in dividends will affect the share price in the imperfect market world. Uh, there's a number of reasons for this. One of the reasons is what we call here the clientele effect. The idea that um, if you're an Apple shareholder, for example, you like Apple to invest in the new iPad, etc., because that will increase the share price. So they actually don't want any dividends. They have, Apple have a zero dividend policy, and Apple clientele, they like that. Marks and Spencers, on the other hand, they're not investing particularly in great new products, and so therefore their clientele prefer to get this bird in their hand. They prefer to get a high dividend. Should Apple all of a sudden start giving dividends away, then the Apple clientele will think, well, hang on, 
are you not as good a business as we thought you were? Have you run out of ideas? Do you have nothing else to invest in? If Marks and Spencer suddenly cut their dividend, their shareholders will say, are you in trouble? Do you not make the cash that you used to? It's what we also call a signal in effect, which is why I had the traffic lights on that previous slide. It's because it's the signal in effect. If you change your dividend policy, often it signals that something may be wrong and therefore the share price could come down. So that's looked at internal sources. Let's have a look at external sources then. Trade credit, overdraft, long-term loan, preference shares, ordinary shares. Hopefully you realise that as we go down there, the more expensive it becomes. Trade credit being effectively free unless you're missing out on an early settlement discount. And then they get progressively more expensive for the company as, you take, as the person giving you the money takes more risk. Uh, in terms of shareholders then, rights issue, that's for existing shareholders initially. Uh, there's no dilution of control, so the company may, maintains control, which is good. You could have a placing. This is a fixed price share issue to institutional investors. Um, because it's going to very few investors, there's very little cost. So good for small issues. Or you can, instead of just giving it to invest into institutional investors, give it to the public. Um, this will be underwritten by an insurance company and advertised, and therefore will be expensive. Um, but as there's more people interested, it's good for large issues. Another option is the IPO there, the initial public offering. Um, this is when a company issues shares to the public for the first time. Uh, often by smaller, younger companies looking to expand, or larger private companies wanting now to go public. Uh, for an individual investor, though, it's tough to, to predict what the share price will be on the first day because there's very little data about, the, uh, about this young company, so it could be a risky purchase. Um, finally, we want to have a look at venture Capitalists, these are for companies with high growth and, uh, and returns potential. That's when venture capitalists get involved, high growth and high potential returns. Uh, therefore, it's often for early startup companies who do have this high potential. Uh, and the venture capitalist, the VC, makes his money by taking a share, an equity share, and then realising it, then selling it, either as a, in an, an IPO, as mentioned earlier, or in a trade sale of the company.